In the book of Genesis, there are two creation stories. In one, Eve was made with man, and the other, she was made from his rib. Now you will discover why this is the case, and no longer be confused. Did Jesus really die for a mythical man named Adam who lived in a mythical place and died at some mythical age? But wait, does this mean we have to believe in literal talking animals and snakes now? Of course not. Can a snake ever physically talk under any circumstance? No, of course not. It doesn't even have the physical capacity to do so. How about a donkey? Nope. Then why do the stories seem to portray this? Well, they don't. And it's easy if we step back and look at the entire story. Am I saying that the entire Bible has to be taken literally? Of course not. There's psalms, parables, prophecies, stories, all kinds of things that aren't supposed to be taken literally. But Genesis is not one of these things. Scripture is clear on this as well. Now the question remains, is any of this actually true, or is this just a Bible story without any evidence behind it? Well, the evidence is in. These biblical stories are true. It gets better. They found the name Bilam, son of Beor. How much better can it get but the earliest prophetic writing of any kind anywhere? Right here, right where I'm standing, the inscription confirms Bilam, son of Beor, his spirit lives in me. He was here. Christians believe that the biblical patriarchs were real people. So did Jesus, and so did the apostles. But their ages are so high that mainstream academia and people in general have deemed them too improbable to be true. You see, today people are lucky to even live to 80 years old. Yet the Bible shows ages of people reaching nearly a thousand years of age. So what's going on? Well, geneticist Dr. John Sanford and Dr. Robert Carter thought they should test these genealogical ages and see what happens. They predicted that if the patriarchs were real people living to these extreme ages mentioned in the Bible, then the evidence would present itself. Lo and behold, after the ages were plotted, the results revealed what statisticians call an exponential power curve. Plotting their ages did not reveal a slow linear decline in ages as would be expected, but rather a curved one that reveals a typical biological decay curve. Exactly what we would expect to see if Noah's flood bottleneck was true and the former world had passed away, leaving humanity in a much worse state biologically. Historical genealogies, harmful genetic mutations, writing systems, mathematics, civilizations, all of these are documented at a rising 5,000 years ago. How? Why? It should be obvious. But yet, they want us to believe that humans waited 195,000 years to figure out all the same things at exactly the same time worldwide. Give me a break. One thing that I find ironic is that a skeptic resorts to saying that there is no design in nature. Yet, we directly copy nature's design ourselves all the time. As a matter of fact, there are entire fields of science which deal directly with the subject. Biomechanics and biomimicry are two such fields. It's where we get the word bio-inspiration from, where we mimic God's design of creation to create our own things. If evolution were true, then why, when it comes to medicine, does the National Institute of Health use the Young Earth Creation model of Mendel's accountant, a Young Earth Creationist model designed by Dr. John Sanford? Clearly, when it comes to health, the largest biomedical research company in the world doesn't care about creation versus evolution debate. They just care about what works and what's true because they need to heal people and they choose the Young Earth creation evidence, not evolution, because they know the truth. Evolution is a lie.